Here we are with the CAN bus Jeep, and I'm going to show you this module. That's it right there with electrical tape holding it to the washer bottle. That's the entire CAN interface. Now, this is aluminum and potted. The production one will have a Deutsch connector, gold plated, and it will be ready to be run in the engine compartment. Other than that, as you can see, we have our standard ECM layout and our fuse block. And if you look at this fuse block, you can see we're running all the GM circuits. We're not taking any shortcuts there. So, Christina's going to show us this is the MoTeC module and the body control module from GM. This is what used to be in the interior during the install. Now, honestly, I have no problem putting these in. If the install was clean, these work great. This is the current interior harness. It's just an accelerator pedal position sensor, APP, and the data link connector. And that's it. This module has eliminated the MoTeC module, the GM BCM, and again, we are running the GM BCM routines inside of this microprocessor. We're not just ignoring them. We are running full GM power distribution, ground distribution, and redundancies. And as you can see here, our Jeep computer is not even plugged in. Our Jeep PCM is not in line in this network. And you can see our dash functionality. Here we are in another LSJK. This is an LS3 in a earlier JK. What's different about this build is it has our CAN interface module. Almost everything in this dash is being driven by the CAN module. That includes the tachometer, the prindle, the coolant temp. Let's show you a couple of the features. Now our air conditioning is completely integrated through CAN and that means there is no discrete inputs. It's CAN to CAN for EVAP temperature, condenser pressure, AC on request, idle bump, cooling fan control, etc. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop it down in the manual mode here. You see we're in sixth. If I downshift, or I upshift, you can see it responds to those commands. This module is has eliminated both the original MoTeC module and the GM body control module. Now when I say eliminated the GM body control module, we are running the same routines, diagnostics, and redundancies that the GM body control module ran. And what that means is we can have features like brake signal switch diagnostics and cruise control and tap. Let me demonstrate that. So we're cruising along. I'm going to set my cruise control. And as you can see here, the dash light is run right through the original JK switch. So we're in cruise right now. I'm going to bring it back. And you can see we're in sixth gear. Now I'm going to tap shift down. So we're tap shifting down and up and cruise. Now I'm going to hit my brake switch. And you can see that uh, cruise disengages. All this is being done through the can. This module is about two by three inches. It's going to be encased in aluminum and potted. It's going to be ready to be run under the hood. And the, the reduction of count of wires in the interior is basically down to the accelerator pedal and the data link connector. So I'm just sitting here in traffic and our air conditioning is being controlled completely by the GM side and that's not just for AC request but also for condenser pressure. In the newer JKs with the automatic air conditioning you have automatic blower speed control and, and mode door or temperature control. So let's talk about some of the other advantages. One, we've eliminated all redundant sensors. That includes the oil pressure sensor, and the oil pressure light indicator is 
functional on this dash, the coolant temp sensor, and all the other sensors. Um, we've even integrated the accelerator pedal, map sensor, uh, tachometer into other systems for additional functionalities. The cooling fan in this Jeep does happen to be a stock two-speed DC brushed cooling fan and it is interfaced through the CAN bus which means it is being run just like it was originally but the GM side is giving the Chrysler side the information to operate the fan. Now if you choose to upgrade to a pulse width modulated variable speed fan like the Pentstar fan or the Camaro SS fan this system will support those and it there's a lot going on there because let's say you had a variable speed SS fan the fan will be driven off of engine coolant temperature transmission fluid temperature vehicle speed AC pressure and other parameters so all that's functional including the AC idle bump which means when you turn your AC on the GM will compensate for the idle load with the throttle body. It's a very smooth setup. So let me show you something interesting about the manual mode. There's three different modes when you go into the manual gate. One is tap shift, as you all know. One is gear lock, and one is a basically a sport mode. And let me show you what happens. We're gonna go back into the manual mode. You can see we're in first. What I'm gonna do is bump up to let's say third. Now I can even choose fourth if I want. But by doing this we are now setting the maximum gear that we'll shift up to in the sport mode. So let's take off. There's second. And third. So we're in third gear now and it won't go beyond third gear. Now if I want to upshift and I come down here to my tap shift fourth, fifth, sixth. So basically I can control the maximum gear that I want it to shift up to in tap shift mode. Now I personally prefer automatic. I think the 6L80 does an excellent job and it is adaptive which means it learns how you drive. Now our air conditioning right now is doing a lot of different things. If we look here you can see our AC request signal right through the GM side as well as the AC pressure and the command on the air compressor. So what's basically happening is the GM side is getting a signal stating that the AC is requested on. It's controlling the compressor on and off while controlling the throttle body to compensate for the, the additional load. It's looking at the EVAP or the condenser pressure and let's look at that pressure again, Mitch. Where is that? Uh, I see it's 136 PSI. Now, that's really not very much, but we're going down the road. We've got a lot of airflow. But what you'll see is, as that number rises, the, as that number rises, the computer will increase the pulse width on the, on the fan and increase the, span, uh, the fan variably. It's not going, well, this, not this one, because this particular vehicle has a discrete fan, but it does have a high and a low. So the GM computer will control that, as well as if you had a pulse width modulated fan, it will control that pressure m more accurately because with a variable speed fan, it's just not on and off. You have everything in between. So all that is being done right through the CAN bus. There is nothing tapped into the interior of this vehicle. In fact, the only thing we have on the interior of this vehicle is a data link connector and an accelerator pedal connector. The body control module has been removed. The MOTIC module has been removed. We're not even running the Jeep PCM at this point. Now, I'm not going to say in the production version we're going to eliminate all these modules. We most likely will eliminate two of the three. And there's reasons for that, for safety and redundancy. But the install time and the parts count have dropped dramatically. And we're going to show you this CAN interface module here soon. And this is very exciting to me. My guys have worked really hard to not only get this to work, but to get it to work properly. Like if I were to engage cruise control right now, we are now in cruise. And let's say I bring it down into tap shift, downshift the gear, going down a hill. And let's say I need to hit the brakes to disengage cruise. 
which I just tapped on the brakes, you can see it disengaged. That's not just one signal being hardwired into the GM computer telling it to turn off. That is two signals being monitored and synchronized, a high to low and a low to high. And those signals are constantly checked for proper function and redundancy and safety. So if they were to go out of sync, those brake signals, your cruise control would get be inhibited and you would throw a code. We're not removing any of the diagnostics or the trouble codes associated with the cruise system or any of the other systems, for example. Um, even with the air conditioning, all the data can be read right through a scanner. Essentially what's happening here is we're running a GM engine in a Chrysler vehicle, but the GM and the Chrysler are working so well together, they're seeing the same signals and, act, and acting upon them. We are still keeping these networks independent of each other and using a non-critical bridge. What that means is we are not hacking the calibrations, we are not removing critical modules that have to be there without replacing the routines those modules run. We are not doing a hybrid where we're putting an LS inside of a Chrysler operating system. We are not reducing the circuit count, power distribution, ground distribution. Essentially what we're doing is we're running two, two systems in parallel with a small non-critical bridge. And I'm going to show you that small non-critical bridge here in a second. And if that bridge were removed, Yes, you would lose some functionality, but yes, you would also drive home. So things like fuel pump control, charging system, cooling fan, all being done right through the GM side. So as long as that motor's running, you're driving home. You might be driving home with the wipers on, you might be driving home with the lights flashing, but you're driving home. And that's pretty much what happens when a tip and fails, except when the tip and fails, you stop. So we've built in as much redundancy as we can and as much simplicity as we can.